Lord, oh God, I magnify your holy name. Hakatorianda la bordoko saye. Ikara mahande le bordoko toria katara bahata. Lo bore katala baba, your authority, God, by your word today, O oh Lord. We claim dominion in the name of Jesus. Lord, oh God, we thank you for every single thing that you've done. But Lord, I worship you, O oh God, right now for who you are. Ikara katara mahande le bordoko sotoye. Kitara mahasa talabordi o korebaha. Lord, I lose your perfect will to be done in this place. Lord, let there be nothing getting in the way of what you want to do today. Hande le bordo kotoria tala bordo kosa. Rekete le bordo kotori mahande le bordo kotoye. Reke sokoto le bordo kotona mahaya. Isundi arana ne le boria taye. Rekete le bordo kotona handa. Rekete le masondo le bordo koye. Lord, rekete ne mahande le bordo koye. God, I confess, O oh Lord, that you are my Father, and that you've given me all authority and all power, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. He are that you've given all authority and power, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh God, you have all authority, you have all power, O oh Lord, and you have given your authority to your church, O oh Lord, and we receive the authority, God, we receive that authority, Jesus. We thank you, O oh Lord. We worship you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh Jesus, would you just thank him? Would you just worship him right now in the name of Jesus? Lord, I lose your liberty in this place. I lose your grace in this place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Sakatala Borriata da Borroco, Kitara Boho Shatara, Kitara Baha Tara Borrio Toro Boho Sata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Would you just tap into the flow of the Holy Ghost right now? The Holy Ghost is moving in this place and it's here, but it's wanting to manifest itself in a greater level and a greater height in it. In order for it to do that, we need to begin to tap into what it's doing, tap into what it's speaking. And would you just begin to take time and do that right now? 
would you respond to the call of God in prayer right now? Would you respond to the leading of the Holy Ghost? In the name of Jesus. Lord, oh God, we need you, Jesus. We need dependency on you. Lord, oh God, for without you, we can do nothing. Lord, nothing that has value, nothing that has purpose, nothing that can ever satisfy. Lord, oh God, we need you in this place. We need you every single day, oh God. Lord, I lose your perfect will, O Lord, in this place. I lose, O Lord, the manifestation, O God, of your spirit, of your power. I lose your authority to be in this place, God. Lord, or your will to be accomplished. Lord, for your will to be done. For what you have spoken to be released, O Lord, through your vessels, through your conduits. Lord, oh God, that whatever you want to do, that it would be done in this place. Would you just forget about what's around you right now? And would you just begin to pray? Would you forget about those situations? Those problems, those obstacles. And would you just let God take control? Would you relinquish it to Him? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive us of any unrighteousness or uncleanliness, God, that is not of your will, O oh Lord. Forgive us of any wrong thought process. Forgive us of any wrong actions, O oh Lord. We come to you, O oh God, for if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and Turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. It takes repentance in order to open up heaven. It takes repentance in order for him to hear. It takes repentance in order for a land to be healed. So would you do that right now just for a moment. Lord, oh God, I don't want anything that's selfish. I don't want any ties of the flesh. I don't want anything that's tainted. Oh Lord are spotted by the flesh But God I want to act in the spirit I want to flow with the Holy Ghost I want to flow and in demonstration Remove whatever is standing in the way God that's it there's a flow right now there's a flow of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Halabordo Kotora Bahaya, Halabordo Cordianda la Bohosa, Halabordo Cordianda la Bordeketea, Handele Bordo Cositi Aramahanda. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Halabordo Cosa Cardianda de Bocorequetea, Recotora de Bordin de la Bordo Cosaya, Rebande le Bordo Cosondo lo Bordio Cordiata. Something's being released in this place. Something's being released into this atmosphere. And God is simply wanting us to get a hold of what he's doing right now. He doesn't want us to work for it. No. He just wants to us to receive what he's doing. There's things in the atmosphere right now that have been birthed through many years of prayer. 
prayer through many years of fasting and they're being made accessible to you right now because God has chosen this church in order for him to deliver certain words certain prophecies certain revelation to us and things that would have taken years are now being birthed in a moment and in an instant because God has chosen this church if you believe that would you just begin to worship God would you believe it in your spirit would you believe it in your heart and say God that's for me Lord oh God your promise is yea and amen God's birthing things in you right now that would have taken years but because of your faithfulness and because of your steadfastness it's being birthed in moments it's being birthed in seconds it's being birthed in minutes because God has chosen you there's things in the spirit right now that are being birthed and if you would just get a hold of it would you just let go right now and allow God to speak to you would you let go of all the obstacles of all the situations just begin to say God I commit this problem to you it's not mine anymore it's yours in the name of Jesus, God, oh Lord, this problem that I'm going through, this addiction, oh Lord, this circumstance, God, it's not mine anymore. I leave it in your hands, Jesus. I leave it in your hands, Father. There's a release in this place. The peace of God is in this place right now. Lord, oh God, you are in the midst. You are in this place, Lord. I thank you for your peace which passeth all understanding, all human knowledge, oh Lord. I thank you for the peace of God. God wants to give his peace in this place. God wants to give his peace. His peace that passes uh, all human knowledge, all thinking, uh, all capability. If you desire that peace, uh, would you just stretch your hands towards him? Uh, would you stretch your hands towards heaven? Uh, only if you desire his peace. Uh, God, oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, by the authority of the word of God uh, and the power that is in the name of Jesus, uh, I loose the peace of God uh, which passes all uh, understanding, all human knowledge. You're going to go home tonight with peace that you've never felt before. If you believe that, just shout amen. If you believe that, just begin to say, God, I receive it. Because when you speak it, it completes the cycle of faith. I believe, therefore I speak. What you just did in the atmosphere is you said, God, you said it through somebody. I believe it's going to happen. And God is going to fulfill his word. You're going to leave home with peace you're going to leave home with restoration you're going to leave home with victory you're going to leave home with triumph in the name of Jesus it's not God's will for you to leave the same way you came but every time you have an encounter with him you begin to change that every time you meet him in prayer you begin to be transformed that every time you begin to talk with him his words resonate with your spirit and you're not just listening you're not just hearing words but you're applying it to your life in the name of Jesus he's applying words to your life 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all authority belongeth to you, God. All the power is yours. All the authority is yours. All the kingdom is yours. All of heaven is yours. All of it is yours. All of the glory is yours, Jesus. All of the honor is yours. All of the praise is yours. Hallelujah. Would you start declaring what is his? Would you start saying, God, it's your honor. God, it's your power. God, it's your authority. God, this temple, it's yours. Start declaring what's his. And you may need to give up some things to him, which actually do belong to him, and they didn't even belong to you. But be just begin to say, God, I give my life to you because this life is not my own. God, I give, oh Lord, myself away to you because, oh Lord, I don't even own myself, God. The only thing I own is this will. And God, I give it to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I declare it's not even my circumstance. It's not even my problem. It's not even my trial. God, you take ownership of it, Lord. It's yours. When you go through an obstacle, your speech should not say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because that means you're trying to do it on your own. But instead, just declare, God, you have it in control. God, hey, you know what to do. God, you're ordering my steps. God, you're doing this. God, you're in control. God, I'm not going to worry because it's not my problem. Lord, if you really are who you say you are and you're in control and you're God of all creation of heaven and in earth, you're Lord of all, then, Lord, it's not my problem, God. It's yours. I don't take ownership of it, God. Oh, God, I cast my cares to you. I cast my burdens, the things that I'm holding on to. Lord, I no longer take ownership of it. But, God, I detach it from myself so it can go to who it belongs to. That's what casting your cares is. It's giving God what belongs to him. God, this is not my situation to worry about. This is not my problem to worry about. God, I give it to you. Lord, I give this situation to you. God, I detach myself from the things that I'm worrying about because it's not mine to worry. It's not my business to worry about. It's your business, God. There's revelation out here if you're open to receive it. God, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry, Jesus. It's not my problem, Lord. It's yours. God, because I no longer take ownership of this life and the things that I deal with it. Because, God, this life's not my own. So that means the things that I go through, it's not even my own because it's out of my control. But, God, I know it isn't yours. I know you're in control. And if you're in control, it's yours. Because whatever you're in control of, you take ownership of. So God, I give what is not even mine. And I give it back to you, Jesus. Because really you own it. And I may think I do. But I don't own a single thing. Only my will. And God, I give it to you. Because it's not my problem to worry about. It's not my decision to worry about. It's not my circumstance to worry about in the name of Jesus would you just relieve yourself from those burdens that you're holding on to you hold on to a lot of stuff I can hear the Lord saying that very clearly to someone 
You hold on to way too many stuff that's out of your control that you don't even need to hold on to. But thus saith the Lord, detach yourself from the mundane things. Detach yourself from things you don't even need to worry about. If you stop worrying about it, I'll start handling it. If you stop worrying about it, I'll start working on it, saith the Lord. If you stop worrying about it, that's when I will begin to step in and I will begin to perform the miraculous. When you step out of the way, I will fill your spot and I will move into it. Say it, the Lord. Handabaka, would you receive that in this place? Would you receive that word? When you step out of the way, God steps in. When you move out of the way, he moves in and says, let me heal you. Let me work on it. Let me protect you. God can't solve your problems if you're trying to solve it yourself. So in order for him to do a work in you, you got to give it up. You got to say, God, I give up my control. Lord, oh God, I'm not in control of this. You are, Lord, I give it to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. There's ministry in this place. If you're hungry for it, there's ministry in this place. Angels have stepped into this realm, to this place. I wonder for just a moment, can we just tap into what God is doing? Can we just tap in to what God is speaking? I know this is pre-service prayer, but the service starts when the church starts praying. The service has already started. If you're looking for the next thing and you're waiting for something else, this is it. I want you to just begin to tap into the flow of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I refuse to be a spectator, but God, I'm going to operate. He caught up both Sicarianda. There it is. Tap into that flow. Tap into that flow. Some of you are getting it. There's ministering spirits in this place. There's supernatural healing in this place. The protection of God is in this place. Some of you are going to go home and you're going to have a a layer of protection that God is giving as a covering over your family. If that's for you, receive it and grab it. You're going to leave home with the protection from God this night. When you get back home, you're going to feel something upon you that wasn't there before because God wants to reveal himself to a few hungry people. If you want that protection over you, would you begin to lift up your hands towards heaven? If you want that protection over you, that layer of protection over your family, over your spouse, over your children, would you lift up your hands? And with those hands, would you begin to lift up your voice? If you believe it, if you believe it is for you, lift up your voice. Lift up your your voice with a voice of triumph and begin to say hallelujah God it is done Lord that layer of protection is upon me Lord oh God what the enemy has tried to attack me with can no longer come into my life because protection is upon me the protector is upon me I abide in the shadow of his wing I'm in the secret place. I am in the secret place. Hakarabo Sotoye. Halabordo Kosokoraba. 
I am in the secret place say it God the secret place is the place of protection the secret place is a place of shelter and when you tap into it whatever problem you go through you will find shelter you will find covering you will find something that you did not find previously before because the secret place is the dimension of my protection some of you receive that right now if it bears witness with your spirit you're in the secret place of God in the name of Jesus would you worship God right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah we worship you Lord we worship you God come on somebody would you worship him in Jesus name thank you Father thank you Father would you stretch your hands towards heaven and would you thank him from your heart Lord we enter into your gates with thanksgiving oh God Lord into your courts with praise we're thankful unto you O King and we bless your name somebody bless this name right now would you bless the name of the Lord would you build a throne room in your heart would you build an atmosphere of praise around you that God's spirit could begin to inhabit your praises in the name of Jesus Christ oh he promises through his word he will inhabit your praises the praises of his people would you thank him for every good thing that has ever happened to you would you thank him for every blessing would you thank him for every healing every financial need that he has met his hand of protection that, that was already mentioned in Jesus name thank him for his healing God I bless your name would you ask God to forgive you right now of any secret faults any presumptuous sins Lord we confess our sin before you oh God hallelujah Lord we confess our sin before you Lord if we say we have no sin we lie and the truth is not in us forgive us God of thoughts of words of actions oh Lord we confess it father and you are just you are faithful O oh Lord to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness come on somebody would you begin to confess it hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ repentance oh repentance is the doorway to the presence of God that's what John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance preparing the way of the Lord in Jesus name in Jesus name we don't rationalize it Lord our tendencies our flesh God our frailties our weaknesses Lord but when we are weak you are made strong would you allow the Holy Ghost to flow through you right now would you allow the Spirit of God to take your weaknesses and make you strong as it becomes him that lives through you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah, 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 God. Uh, somebody cast your cares upon him right now, not just the things uh, that you don't like, uh, but even the good things. Uh, would you cast it unto the Lord? Uh, everything that matters to you, cast it before him. Come on, somebody. Would you cast your cares upon him? Come on, there is a need of collective prayer in the house. There is power when we pray together in Jesus' name. Cast your cares. Cast your cares. Both the good and the bad. Lord, we give it to you. We want your will and only your will, Lord. We're not going to help out, God. We're not going to dilute it with, your, with our will, Lord. Come on, somebody. 
Cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. Cast your cares, your job, your finances, your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. Cast your health upon him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Cast everything that you care about. Everything you care about in the name of Jesus. We surrender our will, Father. We surrender our will, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Somebody begin to pray right now for those that have visited the church just this past Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, somebody pray for Marco. Amen. And Courtney, Courtney right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Marco and Courtney, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, for revelation. Come on, somebody, pray for them right now. Don't pray for anything else, but pray for Marco and Courtney right now that visited this Sunday. Come on, collectively, let's pray together. Let's stand in the gap for these souls that revelation may come. That salvation may come. That deliverance may come. Mention their name. In the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap, God. For Mark, oh Lord. For Courtney, oh God. Lord, draw them. Draw them in the name of Jesus. Draw them in the name of Jesus. Come on, just as God has drawn you to the truth, would you love them enough? Would you stand in the gap? With the love of God flowing through you. For this couple that God has drawn this past Sunday. In the name of Jesus. Come on somebody. We be your laborers, O Lord. We are your laborers, O God. Laboring. Oh, I travail in birth again. For you until Christ be formed in you, the Apostle Paul said. Would you travail in birth for these souls? For Jackie that came this past Sunday. Somebody pray for her right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray for her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you have drawn her. You have drawn, drawn Jackie, oh Lord. It might have been new to her, oh God. But she stayed, oh Lord. God, I pray right now through our collective prayer, through our collective faith, Lord, as we stand in the gap for Jackie in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray for Anthony right now. Oh, that was baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray for him right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Anthony, oh Lord. God, I pray that you keep drawing him. Lord, I pray that you keep talking to him. I release your grace upon Anthony, oh God. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name, would you pray for him right now? 
Would you intercede for him right now, for Anthony, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lead him, Lord. Guide him, O oh God, into all truth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, cause there to be a hunger and thirst continually upon him, O oh God. Keep drawing him, Father. Release angels to surround him, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray for Ignacio and John. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe John wants to be baptized this Sunday. Oh, John was in a wheelchair a couple of Sundays ago. Somebody pray for him right now for John. And Ignacio, Father, we stand in the gap. Father, we stand in the gap in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody release revelation upon them. Lord, we release revelation of the gospel upon them, Lord. Their need of a Savior. Come on, somebody pray right now. That they would be convicted that they need a Savior. That they need to change their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray for Dora right now that was here last Sunday. Come on. Would you pray for Dora right now that God would reveal to her truth? Lord, let blinded eyes see, O oh Lord. Let the deaf ears hear your word, O oh God. Lord, don't hide your gospel, O oh King. For if your gospel be hid, is it to them that are lost? In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray for Dora right now, somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for divine revelation in the name of Jesus. For you have come to seek and to save that which was lost, O oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Ricandele Kesete. Somebody pray for Julia that was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, Julia and Hannah, in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray for her right now, for these two, that were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost together. We pray for Julia, Lord. God, we pray for Hannah, oh God. Come on, somebody, would you stand in the gap? Would you stand in the gap in the name of Jesus? Lord, Somebody mentioned Noel. Oh, and Tom tuning in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray revelation upon them, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, a drawing of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, reveal truth. Lead them and guide them into all truth. For when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead them and guide them into all truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, would you pray for laborers right now, Father? He said there's no shortage of the harvest, that the harvests are plenteous. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe the harvest is plenteous? But he said the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Would you pray right now that God would send laborers? Come on, somebody. Oh, that God would eject laborers into the harvest field. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, would you pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, oh God, for laborers, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord or the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You can't pray that prayer without becoming a laborer yourself. Without praying for yourself to be sent. Would you one more time pray for laborers into the harvest? Jesus himself said, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers. They are few. Would you pray right now that God would send laborers? Come on, would you pray right now in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Le kandara na yorokoto satalaya na yalabakasata. Come on, somebody, would you pray right now? Lord, send forth laborers into the harvest field, O oh God. Lori kandara na yorokoto soto. Come on, would you say, Lord, send me, O oh God. Send me, O oh God. Send me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Send me, O oh Lord, into the harvest field. That I may be a fellow laborer in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, would you believe your prayer right now? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Would you believe your prayers? Would you believe in the one who answers prayers in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you this coming Sunday to come for corporate prayer. How many of you feel and sense the need? for coming together and praying together. The promises of God, him showing up, is where is dependent on two or three. And I thank God there's more than two or three, but it emphasizes the need to come together into his house, which is called the house of prayer. Would you make that commitment all throughout the rest of this year to come early? Amen. It's more important than anything that you ever do. That is to pray. In Jesus' name. Uh, on, on June 25th and June 30th will be our corporate prayer right here at the Lighthouse. But in addition to that, every service we're spending time, amen, to pray collectively. And God is answering. How many of you sense that? God is answering. In fact, why don't you pray right now that God would just give you a sensitivity when you meet people on the street or all throughout your day that God will begin to quicken you and recognize that it is God that is bringing these people to you in the name of Jesus. Would you pray right now, Father? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, as we go about our day, Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, would you pray? As I go about my day, God, uh, that I would be sensitive, O oh Lord, to the people that you bring uh, along my way. Uh, that you would quicken my mouth, my tongue, uh, what to say, what to speak, O oh Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, let your spirit flow through me in that moment, Lord. Uh, let me not think what to say, uh, but it shall be given to you and I what to say in that moment. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Would you pray that prayer right now in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. God is doing that. God is bringing people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Sister Lachica is going to come and teach. But before she comes, I just want to remind us of our 
Connect group this coming Friday, our San Clemente group on June 10th, Mission Viejo on the 18th with our college and career group in Jesus' name. It's good to have Santa Nichols. Amen. Good to have you in Jesus' name. Is that your sister? Praise God. Dora's sister. We welcome you. Amen. And good to see uh, Shan back in the house of All God right. and Brother Armando. Keep him in prayer. How many believe God's doing something? God is doing something. God is hearing our prayers. How many are still praying the 24-hour prayer chain every Wednesdays? Amen. I want to encourage you to be faithful to that. God is doing something, and I believe we're going to have two baptisms this Sunday. One lady that Sister Chica has been working with, Sherry, uh, she emailed or called, left a voicemail. She wants to be baptized this Sunday, and we're praying John, amen, uh, that Brother Armando knows is going to get baptized this Sunday as well. Would you thank God for that right now, and that God would use you? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. All right. Praise God. A couple of weeks ago, we introduced the topic of spirit-led soul winning. And before I go into part two tonight, I want to give a quick review of part one by stating the why, the what, and the how of spirit-led soul winning. So the why of soul winning is because he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? And because we are his body, the mind, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ is in heaven. His mind is there. We are his body to do his work to function as his body. That's why we need to win souls. Amen? Number three is also because we glorify him by bearing much fruit. That is his desire for his disciples, amen, to bear much fruit. And these fruit, this fruit is souls, amen, souls. And the why of soul winning is also because we are commanded to go, amen, to be his witnesses. And because there is also, as Pastor said earlier, we pray for laborers, right? Because there are a lack of laborers, amen? And so we need to be ejected out into the fields where the harvest is. And the what of soul winning is about going to the harvest, and it is specifically for us to be at the right place at the right time. Amen? It's nothing coincidental here. There's no accidents here in soul winning. Amen? God is proactive here. So we have to be in tune with God. Amen? Because he is setting this up. Amen? He's working on one end and he's working on the labor. So we got to be ready. And that's why it's called spirit-led soul winning. Amen? And so another part of the what is that we need to plow the soil of their hearts through prayer. Amen. And I like what we did. We prayed. Amen. We prayed for the soul so that when they come into their house, they would have the faith in them to receive the word of God and to repent and to obey the word. Amen. So we need to pray. Prayer is part of soul winning all the time. In Jesus' name. All right. And then... The how of spirit-led soul winning is accomplished by hearing and obeying the voice of God. And this is supported by the foundation of knowing the word of God, the truth. Amen? Which are the seeds that we sow, right? 
the words of truth. The seed is what that's what we sow. Amen. So we need to know the truth by being a workman. Amen. What does a workman do? Studies to show himself approved unto God, right? We need to be workmen, amen? We need to invest time to study, to know his word so that whenever God opens a door, we can sow that seed of truth, his word, his word. And all this is all about walking in the spirit, hearing, hearing his voice so that we can obey his voice. Knowing the word of God, our foundation, the Logos, and walking in the spirit. That's the entire process. It's called walking in the spirit. A process of being governed by the spirit all the time. The spirit is leading us all the time. And so we, this is in direct opposition. Walking in the spirit is in direct opposition of what? Walking in the flesh walking in the flesh because that is what being carnal so you can have the holy ghost and you could speak in tongues occasionally but if the spirit is not leading you every day guess what you were carnal that's the word it's what the word of god says read it in the book it is there so church if we are not intentionally walking in the spirit then we cannot even be called sons of God. For when we continue to walk in the flesh, you know, we are actually denying or renouncing our sonship. For it's the sons of God that are led by the Spirit of God. Did you see that? The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Does it say sometimes? No, are continually led by the Spirit of God. It's a consciousness. Consciousness. I want to follow you, God, every time. And that's why when I wake up, the first thing I say, Lord, I submit my will to you. What is your will for me today? I'm going to follow you. Amen? In Jesus' name, we want to be the sons of God, the easy-to-read Bible version says that the true children of God are those who let God's Spirit lead them, all right? But if we are walking in the flesh, we are minding the things of the flesh, and that's enmity against God. It's in your word. Enmity against God. I can't be led in spirit-led soul winning if I'm not striving by the grace of God to live a spiritual life. For I can't be sensitive to the spirit if I'm not governed by the Holy Ghost. And I know it's a day-to-day -day thing, right? Dying to the flesh every day. How's that going? All right? Right? Dying out to the will of the flesh and the desire of the flesh. It's an everyday thing. So that I can walk in the spirit. So that I can have supernatural power to please God. Because we can't do anything good, right? Through our own ability, our own will, our own talents, our own intellect. There's nothing we can do that will last, amen? That is fruitful in the kingdom of God. It's only through him, only through him. So we can't do it on our own will. And that's why the true definition of sin is missing God's mark or missing his will for us. He has a will for every one of us every day, every day. Yeah, he has a will corporately for the body. He has expectations for us as the body. But individually, he has a will that we have to follow. And like what Bishop Wright would always say, every day is a test. Because it's a test. Are you going to submit your will to God? Are you going to follow his will? Amen. So missing the mark of God is sin and letting the flesh be in control. 
And that's why in the last days, the Lord cannot possibly know us if we are doing our own will. Even if we've accomplished some great spiritual things, I don't care what they are, miracles, I don't care what they are. But because the sin of iniquity or self-will disqualifies us, because be, being led by his spirit, this process involves us personally following God, which involves him personally knowing and leading us in our daily walk. And that's why he can't know us if we're not doing that. He won't know us if we're not walking continually in his will. He won't know us. That's why he won't know us no matter what works we do. So we've got to always submit to his will, follow his will, surrender our will unto the Lord. Amen. All right. Now, this is part two. This is where it begins. And we are going to continue to expound on the how of spirit-led soul winning. In a previous lesson, we have studied how to hear the voice of God or the voice of God. Do you remember that? Okay. It's in your notes. It's in your notes. And we learned that God communicates to us through thoughts and impressions, right? Or feelings. You can call it impressions or feelings. And we call these thoughts as the voice of God or the spoken or the rhema of God, okay? The rhema of God or his logos that applies to us personally at that time when it is spoken to us by the Spirit. All right? Then the common impressions from God are the peace of God or convictions of God. Okay? And, um, but the most important impression is what? The peace of God. Amen? The peace of God. Because a lot of times this can be our decision maker. When we don't hear the reign of God that provides what specific direction, then we use the peace of God that's more of a yes or a no. Okay? Um, so, but how does the peace of God work? The presence of God's peace confirms God's will in what we're currently doing or in what we are about to do, okay? And then the absence of God's peace causes us to question what we're doing at that time or what we're about to do. Does that make sense? So in following your peace, you've got to be sensitive to God's signal of no. For example, you may feel led to go somewhere and even to minister, okay? And then all of a sudden, you would feel the absence of peace. And that's God's way of saying to you, it's not my will for you to go, all right? Or to do whatever you were doing, all right? So we need to be sensitive as we follow God's peace. Per Bishop Wright's experience, 90% of the time, he says, the Lord does not lead us by events or circumstances, but leads us by his rhema, wherein the Spirit of God speaks his logos to us and applies it to our lives at that particular moment, and then it becomes the rhema. And it may be nothing more than go here, go there. Okay? Simple as that. He doesn't have to explain why you're going or he doesn't even have to give you all the directions. You know, you just, you get moving. And he'll explain it to you more when you need to know it. Okay? And there are multiple examples in the word of God on how God has led men this way, amen? Abraham, Philip, 
Paul, Peter, okay, and their journeys. You'll read it in the book of Acts. So I got to be sensitive to the Spirit. I cannot discern the leading of the Lord if I'm not sensitive to the Spirit. And hear me. If the voice of my flesh is running rampant in me, then I cannot and will not discern, and therefore I cannot learn how to hear and obey the voice of the Spirit. Thus, we need to really learn how to hear the voice of God by silencing the voice of the flesh. I know it's challenging at first. Why? Because we've been so accustomed to following the voice of our flesh. Before I got the revelation of iniquity, yeah, I was following the flesh. I thought it was okay. But now we got to recognize the voice of the flesh, so we could say, stop, shut up, I'm not listening to you. I'm following the voice of God, amen? And this is important, okay? This is important because if we let the voice of flesh lead us, it can do damage, even in the house of God, okay? Because the voice of flesh will try to imitate the spiritual things of God. Right? The enemy is an imitator too, okay? But the voice of flesh does not know the ways of God. The voice of the flesh, for example, does not know the timing of God. That person may not be ready for that word that you feel you should speak to them. All right? Okay? Uh, the flesh does not know the tone of God's voice. If you should speak it firmly or gently to that person, okay? Or the flesh may not, does not even know the limitation of God when it's time to stop talking and just let conviction settle in the heart of the soul, amen? You know, because sometimes we are guilty of praying off conviction from these precious souls when we pray for them and make them feel so good that they no longer feel that they need to repent from the sin that God just revealed to them. So church, we need to be conscious of God's leading and not let our flesh take over. As we start in the spirit, let's not end in the flesh. We've got to learn, amen? We've got to learn. Because God is doing new things in this church. God is bringing more souls in. Church, you're pregnant. Got to learn how to do this, amen? We got to learn how to do this God's way. In Jesus' name. Being led by the Spirit is not a science, but an art. You can't draw boundaries on it. There are principles to being led in the Spirit, but there is not a specific method of being led of the Spirit because the Spirit doesn't lead in the same method all the time. That's why we don't do programs. We don't rely on programs. Programs don't work. We go with the flow of the Spirit, which gives life. Amen? So I've got to be willing to let the Spirit lead me however He wants to lead me, whether He wants to lead me by His voice, the rhema, or by His peace as we follow His peace, or by an angelic manifestation, by a vision, by a dream, or by another person God's using to speak a word to me. We've got to be just willing however God wants to talk to us. Amen? So... How do we learn to become spirit-led? Hebrews 5, 11, 13 reads, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, 
and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. That's how King James says it, okay? Now let's see how the Weiss translation says it. This is long, but I couldn't resist. It was such a good translation, so I'm going to read this. There is much that we can be saying, same verses, okay? Yet when it comes to the saying of it, one finds it difficult to explain because you have become those who are in a settled state of sluggishness, yes, of stupidity. It's in the word. In your apprehension of the same. All right, let's continue. In fact, when at this time you are under moral obligation to be teachers, by reason of the extent of time you have been made under instruction, again, you are in need of someone to be teaching you what are the rudimentary things of the very beginning in the oracles of God and have become and still are such as have need of milk, not of solid food. For everyone whose sole diet is milk, is inexperienced in a message which is righteousness in quality, for he is a spiritually immature person or a babe. Wow. Wow. Paul is basically saying that they're dull of spiritual hearing because they were still in the basic concepts of the word of God. Maybe how they got into the kingdom. They stayed there. Okay. And they should have grown by this time, right? Because they have been, let's say, discipled, okay, of the doctrine. They got it, done it, right? But no, they remain there, okay? And that they should have already matured by the time, but they have been lazy and content on being fed. So that they have become unskillful in the word and are immature or carnal. Wow. Then he contrasts that with this. Hebrews 5.14 says, but strong meat, this is what we want, belongeth to them that are of full age. That is not the natural age. That's a spiritual understanding. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And I know I put the root words um, to give you more understanding or context. So we could say it like this. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of spiritual understanding, even those who through the means of habit, practice or exercise have their capacity for spiritual comprehending trained to discern both good and evil okay there's practice involved here okay there's something we need to keep doing here so let's dissect these verses to get to get the complete context all right the difference between the babes and the mature. A babe is still dependent on somebody else to feed them. Okay? If the only word that you get in your life is what is being fed to you when you sit down in the church pews, what are you? Yeah. All right. You're a babe. If you don't take the time to study and feed yourself... You're a babe. So we need to learn how to feed ourselves. People who have the hunger for the word, and I pray that all the time, I want more of your hunger because hunger, right? The hunger for the Lord brings us to his righteousness, oh God, to the right life with God. I want that hunger, and I pray that over you always, the body. That's, that is a healthy, healthy Christian hungering for the Lord because if you hunger, you will be filled, right? So they that hunger, amen, for the word have learned how to study the word supernaturally, amen? 
with him the author guiding amen not by intellect not studying by intellect but supernaturally and they have also learned how to hide the god's word in their heart that when they study conviction sets in it finds a place in your heart mm, i believe that that's true i receive that help me lord i want that that's hiding the word in your heart i believe that hide it in your heart it's not just reading okay it's cleaving to it it's believing it amen it's proclaiming it amen it's letting that faith in you hold on to it believe it in jesus name okay so those that are hungry for the word have learned how to study the word amen supernaturally how to hide god's word in their heart and they come to church to participate in ministry okay not to be spectators to participate in ministry and of course they also want to hear what the spirit of god is saying to the body of christ amen and so we can't skip church because god's also talking corporately to the body we got to hear <laughs> what god wants to say to the body of christ amen he deals with us individually and corporately as a body amen all right so if i'm no longer a babe i've learned how to let god feed me between him and me amen through his word and feeding ourselves it is what gives us the foundation of what we need in order to practice and train our senses isn't that what we read earlier we need to do in hebrews and so how do we practice and train our senses so first of all we need to be attentive to god's voice by being how do we do that being in a spirit of prayer constantly continually can't be doing this occasionally because you're going to miss it <laughs> it's a continual amen yielding to the lord in prayer that's why paul says pray without ceasing amen it all comes together in the word of god so i we need to practice and train so that our spiritual senses and what is senses ability to sense the voice of god and know what he's telling us so that our spiritual senses can be exercised amen for i can't do what god wants me to do by rhema if i don't know that that's god speaking through me through his spoken word or through his rhema so as i practice i exercise or train my senses or my ability to perceive so that my sensitivity is being developed and what am i practicing the ability to discern or judge both good and evil what is of god and what is not of god what's the voice of god what's the voice of the enemy the subtle voice condemnation fear whatever um and the voice of the flesh the voice of the will okay that exercise will help us all right continually when we're exercising amen so the spirit of god teaches us as our senses are exercised to discern both good and evil by the conduit or channel of the act of practice okay and god will always confirm his rhema with signs to help us to learn as he validates his spoken word to us so god is helping us in this okay we have the grace of god and then his we have his signs that confirm it as well amen we can keep doing this in jesus name we can keep growing by all the resources that god gives us amen all right so this process involves the foundation of the word as we feed ourselves amen and hide god's word in our heart along with the training of our spiritual senses as we test them against the word of god that is in us the word that is hidden in our hearts amen so that we can be led by the spirit all right john 6 63 says it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the spirit and the word give 
life. The word without the spirit produces death. So it takes the combination of the Word and the Spirit of God to produce life in somebody. So I cannot be a spirit-led soul winner if I don't have a foundation of the Word, if if I'm not mature, okay? And if I am not sensitive to the Spirit of God. But I know it's a day-by-day pursuit of practicing or exercising our senses by judging it with our knowledge of the word so that we can grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we have mentioned earlier, the key to soul winning, if you remember, is to be led by the Spirit for us to be at the right place, at the right time. A lot of times you don't even, you, you, you wouldn't even know that you're at the right time, at the right place till the door opens. Okay? Does that happen to you, right? Okay? Might look like a plain wall until the door opens. Okay? And it's about principle, not, once again, not methodology. Okay? Okay, and that's why we need to be sensitive. And if you notice, in your walk with God, God doesn't repeat, repeat the same method, method twice. <laughs> if one time this worked, he's going to change it up, all right? Because he wants us to be dependent upon him, not on ourselves. Like, oh, I got it. Nah. <laughs> he wants, it's a continual walk, right? A continual dependency to be led by the Spirit. Amen. But, hey, it gets exciting every time. Okay, it's never boring. Praise God. And so now I'm going to give you examples that demonstrate the principles of spirit-led soul winning. All right, let's start with the first one. Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and the woman at the well. This is where the Lord witnessed to a soul who did not seem to be spiritually hungry. Okay, did not seem to be spiritually hungry. All right, this is interesting. In John 4, Jesus felt led to go through Samaria in his journey from Judea to Galilee. So going through Samaria was a shorter route, okay, which the Jews would avoid because they didn't want to be around the Samaritans, all right? And so, um, but... At that time, the disciples were at the market getting meat, okay? So Jesus was by himself, and he was walking, right? And he was tired. So he saw the well. He stayed by the well, all right? And then a Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water at noon, which was not the popular time that they drew water, okay? And so Jesus, you know the story, but I'll, 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 say, I'll say it anyway. So Jesus asked the woman to get him some water, but she argued with him. Okay? What did the Lord do? He did not argue back. Okay? But this is what he said to her. And you, you know the word. Okay? He said in John 4.10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. But guess what? After that, she still wanted to argue and fuss about politics, race, prejudice, offense, and debate about religion. Sounds familiar? All right, but take note, our Lord Jesus Christ, he dealt with her emptiness, and he told her there was hope, and he told her the source of that hope, right, and said that the source of the water that would quench the the thirst of her emptiness inside. 
I believe that in this first example, the Lord Jesus was teaching us how to deal with difficult people. <laughs> but God wants to win them, amen? God wants us to win them. We can't ignore them. And there's wisdom here in dealing with difficult people. And I want to show you a practical guide that I felt um, God inspiring me to put together. How to deal with difficult souls using the Lord Jesus Christ example, okay? How do we do that, okay? Don't argue with them, okay? Or don't get distracted, okay? When you feel the leading of the Spirit to this person, you'll know it, right? If, you're, if your sensitivity is there, you will feel the drawing. You will. Trust me, you will. That God's, it's like God's leading me to this person. Okay, you will know it. And so you're there, and this person is just, you, you know, um, arguing or, or being negative. Okay, don't get distracted. Okay, and don't involve yourself in the argument. Don't go on a debate. Okay, it's not to de time to debate. Okay, um, and the number two, address their emptiness. That's why you need to stay focused. That's what you're aiming at, their emptiness, okay? And then proclaim to them that there is hope. So don't just stop on the emptiness and leave. Tell them, th so you acknowledge, yes, 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 I'm empty. You know, there's hope. Okay, and then you got their attention, then tell them the source of their hope, amen, which is in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. And then what do we do after that? You minister to them as God leads you. And you could say these things however you want to say it. This is just a guide, okay? And let me tell you this works. I've done it many times. Why? Why do I saying this works? Because usually this is the rhema that he gives me. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, when I read, I go, wow, God, you've been giving this rhema all the time. And so it's not a surprise. Like when I, when I pray over them, I talk to them, they're crying because I, I touch them in. They, they notice that, that emptiness. I, I address their emptiness, emptiness, and they acknowledge that, amen? But I didn't stop there. I said, but you know what? God can help you with that, amen? And then they ask how, and then you show them how. You tell them how, amen? And then number six is expect God to confirm his word. He will do that. He will do that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So let me also say this, okay? You don't need to be in the same shoes of the person you are ministering to in order to feel qualified to minister to them. For soul winning is not about compatibility or about winning them to yourself first before you can win them to God. No, because God is the soul winner, remember? And we are just the conduit following him, okay? For example, you don't have to be an ex-drug addict to win a drug addict, okay? So you know what I'm trying to say. You know, I am an introvert, okay? Believe it or not, I am an introvert. I, I, I can be very shy among strangers, and but but... What happened last Saturday in the plane, right? God used me to minister to a stranger on the plane. Has God put her right beside me? Okay. So don't ever be intimidated by the unfamiliar or by extreme differences that you have from the soul that God is drawing you to. Okay. Because there is always a common element between you and that soul that he's drawing you to and it is their emptiness their emptiness and no matter how they look how they talk or how they appear they all have that emptiness or that need for eternal salvation that nothing in this world can fill amen 
I hope this will help you because it helps me all the time. Okay? So we just need to say what the Lord leads us to say. Okay? Because when we rely on the Lord, we will say the things that they need to hear as God leads you. Okay? What they need to hear. All right? As I prayed for the lady, you know, that I was beside in the plane, um, she was crying. And she told me, thank you, I really needed that. Did I know that? No. But God knew. You know, it's not really difficult. It really isn't. First step is you just have to open your mouth. And you'll be surprised, right? Right, Sister Krista? Yeah. You'll be surprised the things that follow. And sometimes you don't even think it up. It comes out. It surprised me. <laughs> you know? But that's how it works. Because you've been more in prayer. You're feeling that. You're in it, it will flow more freely. Amen? So in Jesus' name, and he confirms it, he confirms it in Jesus' name. We've got to yield to the Spirit because he wants to speak through you, church. He wants to speak through you. And there are many, many hungry souls ready for you to speak to. He's just waiting on you, just waiting on you. Jesus' words to the woman at the well were confirmed because the Spirit of God gave him knowledge of the woman, right? That he would not have known, yeah, where's your husband? He's not here. Oh, yeah, because you don't have a husband. Oh, yeah, oh, because you have another husband. You have many husbands. Anyway, um, so that was word of knowledge, right? What is that? Like the gifts of the Spirit, right? And if you remember our lesson on the gifts of the Spirit, those they have, we have the speaking gifts, the knowing gifts. So God, the Lord Jesus Christ was used in the knowing gifts, okay? And church, get ready. God is going to use you in the gifts of the Spirit, whether it be the speaking gifts, the knowing gifts, the power gifts, healing. And many of you have already been used. But you just yield to the Lord and let him do that, okay? Because it's going to happen because his word says it, amen? Because he will confirm that he sent you. It's his job to confirm it. So you let it flow through you, amen? You pray for them. You take your liberty, amen? You pray them in the airplane, right? Let them pray in tongues, amen? You take the liberty. Let God flow through you because that is his will. That is his, he wants to flow through you. So expect the gifts to flow. Expect it. And you have it. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the gifts of the Spirit. Just practice it. Amen? Practice. Use it. Amen? It's there. You have it. Believe it. Have faith. You have it. Use it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So Jesus had a divine appointment in Samaria. He came to her at the right time when she was drawing water, and he was there at the right, right, the right place, well, where she was drawing water at the right time alone without his disciples, okay? So there's always a right time and a right place for every soul. God knows exactly when to send us to the hungry ones at the right time, when they are ready to hear it and in the right place where there is liberty to witness and where there's no distraction. Amen. God can provide that way, right? Jesus' name. And don't judge who God sends you to talk to by where they are now and but by what they look like now. Okay. Just follow the leading of the Spirit to go to the right place at the right time, and He will show us the right person to talk to and give us the right words to say, the words of eternal life. You know, we just need to get past the, the fact that we, yeah, there are times that we may miss it, but that's okay, right? Because, right, we're still dealing with the flesh, okay? But that's okay. God, there God gives, in His mercy, gives more opportunities, right? You know, because sometimes we may fail to discern God's timing or place. And we have to accept that some may reject it. Okay? But what was your goal? Your goal was just at the right time and the right place to say the words that God told you to say. 
to be the conduit, okay? So it's up to God, the rest, okay? So your goal is to be the conduit in Jesus' name. The woman at the well did not look for Jesus or did not know that she needed him. So there will be souls like that, okay, that God is drawing you to, okay? So be sensitive to that and minister, minister to their emptiness, amen? And the Lord Jesus came looking for her, and the Spirit gave him words to say, such as words of knowledge, and God's going to use you in the gifts of the Spirit, amen? And that, when he did that, that opened her up to the gospel so that her debating spirit left. All right. Now, that is diff a different case for our next illustration with Zacchaeus, okay? For Zacchaeus was hungry for God. He was looking for Jesus, okay? And there are those who are looking for the Lord. And that's why God wants, us to, pos wants to position us to be at the right, right place where they will be, Amen. Luke 19, 1 talks about Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector. As you know the story, he was in a tree, right? And Jesus looked up at him and called him by name, right? And told him that he was going to spend time with him, okay? Now think with me, was it possible that in prayer that the Spirit revealed all this to the man Christ Jesus, right? Okay, remember he still had to learn as well, okay? Um, so that's why we pray, amen? We pray every time, and God may put impressions upon us, okay, right? He may talk to us and be ready, amen? He may put some visions in our mind or tell us some people that he's sending our way. We got to be ready, amen? He may even give us the names in Jesus' name. He could do that. All right. And so as we read... Um, Zacchaeus repented, for he was a backslider, okay? So God would use the same leading of the Spirit to both sinners and backsliders. And we need to let God lead us to the backsliders because it's harder for backsliders to come back on their own, okay? And to minister a back, to a backslider, we need to be led by the Spirit in dealing with their shame, their fear, condemnation, etc. And that's why we continually pray and intercede so that those hindering spirits and ungodly strongholds could be cut off from these souls that God is sending to us. Amen. And as I said earlier, we've got to be involved praying. Amen to get these souls ready for us to speak to them as God leads us. Okay. And there are those of you who have a gift to win backsliders. When the Lord told Zacchaeus, he said, come, I'm going to have dinner with you. He knew the way, amen. He was going to spend time with him so that he would be comfortable with him, amen, before he would witness. And some of you have that. They, you, you know what to do. You have that wisdom. You have that gifting. It just, it just flows easily. And I, I pray, amen, that you will do the will of God, amen, to reach out to backsliders. Of course, pray. Pray for them. But reach out to them. Call them. Invite them to dinner, amen. Spend time with them and because it's time. It's time. God's bringing new souls and God's restoring backsliders. Amen. James 5, 19, 20 says this about the backsliders. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, he's talking about backsliders, and one convert him, let him know that which he which covereth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. Now let's talk about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. All right. I think I'm going to skip some of these um, for the sake of time. And we are going to talk about how he ministered to the eunuch. All right. 
So what happened, the one I'm skipping, is that he was evangelizing. He had the gift of evangelism, okay? Let me tell you, we're all evangelists. And evangelist is not about sermonizing, okay? It's all about proclaiming the good news. We can do that, okay? And it doesn't have to be long. You're proclaiming the good news. Peter did that, right, in the day of Pentecost, right? And he did that, if you remember, pastors preaching to Cornelius, right? And it was, you know, because when he was still talking, the Holy Ghost came upon him. He was still preaching, which means he didn't have to say much, right? They got it. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. So we are all evangelists, and I'm just saying that because God will use you, amen? God can use you to also just to proclaim to crowds, okay? God may put you in that position, so just be ready. You just speak it. Speak it. Amen. God will give you, amen, um, the, what to say. All right. And so he had this great harvest, and they had to call Peter and John, I think, to, um, and a lot got the Holy Ghost when, when um, Philip was preaching, evangelizing. A lot got the whole, no, I'm sorry, not a lot. They, they got convicted. Okay, and mir there was miracles, signs, wonders, and all that, and they were baptized. They wanted to get baptized, right? But Peter and John came because Philip had to leave. God was calling him out of that harvest, okay? Um, and so um, Peter um, then had to lay hands on them, to pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost because they were only because they have not yet received the Holy Ghost right there, okay? <laughs> Acts 8, 17. All right. So let me move on to this. And this is just for an FYI, so you just have an idea. I just wanted to show this to you, how the Holy Ghost re was received. Acts 2, Holy Ghost was poured on them on the day of Pentecost, Acts 8. They laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Acts 10, the Holy Ghost was poured out on Gentiles. Acts 19, Paul laid hands on them. So what do we do? Do we just let the Holy Ghost do the outpouring, or do we lay hands on people? Okay? And I just wanted to show that to you to let, so we can talk about that. Okay? Um, well, what do we do? We... There is no right or wrong way, okay? It's however the Holy Ghost chooses to do this, okay? All right? We should believe for outpourings, but we should also be prepared and be able to pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. All right, okay. Moving along. So Philip was called by the Lord to leave the great harvest and go to the desert, okay? So um, I'm going to jump into... Acts 8, 29, 31. So he went to the desert, and um, when he started moving, the Lord told him what to do, okay? Acts 8, 29, 31. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. There was a eunuch on the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandeth thou what, what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Church, there are those that are hungry for the word but cannot understand it. Or know some of the word but don't know a lot of the other stuff, okay? Okay. And so we need to be ready, amen, to, to help them out, to show them more of the word of God. God wants us to reach to them, and we need to be sensitive in using God's wisdom. And I want to say this, and not to ignore everything else that's going on in their lives, okay? This has helped me, this revelation. I'm going to share this with you. How is one born again? Okay. Yeah, we know we repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, um, filled with the Holy Ghost, right? But where does the process start? Okay. It's like a natural, natural birth. 
birth can take, before birth can take place, conception needs to happen, okay? You don't go instantly from conception to birth. And if being born again is the beginning of the New Testament salvation, how does a person get to that point? It takes faith to be born again. So the question then is, how do we get there? Scripture says that we are begotten of the word, right? The word is the seed, amen? And that the church is what? The mother of us all. So life is conceived even before the baby is born. And it usually, what, in the natural takes about nine months, right? Okay. So we, when we're witnessing, when we're sharing the word, when we see these souls that know some of the word of God, okay, may have a Bible, reading the Bible, they may have some revelation of the word of God, we have to acknowledge where they are in this process from their conception to that process that in the natural, the nine months, okay? And which was exactly what Philip was doing with the Ethiopian eunuch. He did not deny the man's faith up to that point, okay? The eunuch told him what he was reading was one of the books of the prophets about one who was led as a sheep to the slaughter and asked Philip, was the prophet talking about himself or another man? Then Philip began at the same scripture and preached unto him, Jesus. Philip linked what the eunuch already knew to salvation. He did that in verse 35. Sorry, for the sake of time, not showing it up there. He did not deny his past experience, take note, and his past faith, but he took him from where he was into New Testament salvation. What does the word say? He that winneth souls is wise. But I need to know the word of God, amen, by being a workman, okay? And remember Apollos? In the book of Acts as well, Apollos is similar to that. What did, what did the word of God say about Apollos? He was mighty in the scripture, fervent, but he only knew the doctrine of John the Baptist. That's like he repented but he didn't get baptized in Jesus' name, didn't get the Holy Ghost. But, he got, but God called that he was fervent, okay? The Scripture said he was fervent, okay? In Scripture, mighty in Scripture, fervent in, the, in that doctrine. But God sent who? Aquila and Priscilla to show him the way of the Lord more perfectly. We need to realize that there are other people like that, eunuchs, apollices, that are in the womb of the church. You don't acknowledge the baby in the womb as born yet, but you respect the faith that they have, their love for the word and their prayers. And yes, God has answered some of their prayers because they're moving towards him, okay, as they have been conceived spiritually, okay, or begotten of the word. It is already, the process already started, okay, and we need to recognize this because we don't want any spiritual miscarriages or abortions. That's why we need to be skillful in the word by studying, and I personally believe that those of you who have the gift of teaching, God will direct you to these types of souls, these Apollos, these eunuchs, who have already be, con be conceived with a word for you to show them so that they can yet be born or be born again. Amen. Philip proclaimed the good news unto one man. God may lead us to groups or to one person to proclaim in obedience to Matthew 28, 19. And after Philip proclaimed the good news, what happened? The eunuch responded and what? Got baptized. Amen? And the Spirit of the Lord translated Philip. That was pretty cool. Amen? Praise God. All right. I'm going a little over time, but 
These are good stuff, okay? Now, I think this is my last example, okay? Um, and it was, Bishop Wright has a lot of examples, but I chose one here. And it's all about God uses him in spirit-led visitation or door knocking. That's the ministry that God has used him a lot in. And here's something that we can learn in Brother Paul. You can learn and adopt some things with your outreach, what we do as well. All right? Okay. So here's an example where Bishop Wright was a young evangelist ministering to a church. He led them to do visitations so that they could win new souls. So he was preaching to them, and God was blessing the church, but there needs to be new souls. Amen? So he said, okay, let's do visitations. Let's do door, door knocking. And so he went with a pastor, and that's what they did one day. Okay? On the first day, so he was with a pastor. They drove from the church, and the Lord led, led them on where to go. Remember what I said earlier sometimes? God just says, go here or go there. And that's, he followed, felt the leading of the Spirit, and he let, he let the peace of God also confirm, oh, is this a yes or is it a no? Okay? So that's how he was led. Um, and, and Bishop was um, to the street. Okay? So he made a few turns and stopped at a street. They knocked on doors from one end of the street till half of the street, but it did not seem productive. So they went back to the church with the others because others were doing visitation too. So they did half of that street, okay? They, they knocked on the doors, okay? Then on the next day, Bishop felt the leading to go back to the same street but started at the other end of the street. So they knocked, but the houses were all empty, then at the middle of the street, okay, listen, there was a man sitting on his front porch smoking. So Bishop came to him and asked him, have you ever been to a Pentecostal church before? And we could use that line, Brother Paul, okay? All right. And here's another practical guide that I thought might be useful, okay? When we are doing outreach, whether it's door knocking or at the spectrum or, or, or um, you meet somebody, okay? You introduce yourself to them. Tell them that you want to give them an invitation to come to our services, okay? Now, don't let them respond, okay? But start a conversation that God's going to direct you, okay, by asking them a question, okay? And that's what I said, the question, have you ever been to a Pentecostal church? Then, when they answer, let the Holy Ghost direct you, okay? Easy as that. that you try that out, okay? Try that out. If they say they're not interested and close the door, just be thankful to God that your time is not wasted with someone who is not hungry, Okay? If you can't handle rejection, I'm sorry, you can't be a soul winner, okay? We got to get used to this, okay? We got to get used to this, all right? So, and you don't want to compromise and try to convince those who are not hungry. We don't want to do that either. And we need to die to our own personality. If you are too shy like I was or I am or uncomfortable to do it, we got to die to that, okay? But don't worry, as I said. God gives us the resources. God gives us his grace to do his will. He'll help us all the time. Okay, back to Bishop's story. The man who was smoking said, no, I have never been to a Pentecostal church, but ended up doing all the talking. <laughs> it did it for a long time, about 30 minutes, Bishop said. Finally, as they were walking back to the car, okay, he, he, he turned back, and he felt led to go to one more house. He did, but it was empty. So he walked back. So, okay, let's go back. It's time to go. Let's go back to the car, okay? We knocked on all the doors on the street, okay? Then all of a sudden, a car pulled up, and a lady came out. So they introduced themselves to her. Then she asked them, do you understand the Bible? Can you explain it to me? Sounds just like that eunuch, huh? So they went in her house, 
And the Lord led Bishop, talk, Bishop to talk about the Old Testament, about the promises of the New Testament, then the gospel, then about Acts 2. Then she said, yesterday, yesterday I was sitting on the couch reading my Bible and I couldn't understand it. And I looked up to the heavens and I said, God, I don't understand this Bible. Would you send somebody to explain it to me? Then she said to them, where were you? I was expecting you yesterday. I cried when I was watching Bishop's video, and I'm like, we've got to be there. We've got to be at that right place at the right time. They're hungry. Sometimes we think they're not because we don't recognize it, right? We're not going out because we think, okay, they don't want us. But there are, there are the hungry ones there. God is leading them. God is leading them. So yesterday... Take note, this is how God works. Yesterday, they stopped at the house next door to her. But God, in his mercy for her, led them back, okay? And if the other neighbor hadn't talked for so long to delay them enough that the timing was split second, that when, they, when she arrived to her house, they still were there. Wow. And then her friend visits her at the house while they were still there. And she asks him, asks him to explain the Bible to her friend. Then they both come to church with her husband, and four souls were born again. Amen? Then they brought three other people who get saved. From that one door, seven souls were saved because they were at the right place at the right time talking to a prepared soul. This is what spirit-led soul winning is all about. And as we pray every day, we need to pray, amen? We need to pray for the Lord to lead us to the hungry and to lead the hungry to us. We need to pray for God to give us the sensitivity to recognize the person that he is connecting us with. For the soul winner is always on alert to the voice of the Spirit, directing them to a soul. And church, there is no inconvenient time for God to use us to speak to a soul. We must believe that the Spirit of God is working on both ends, leading us and dealing with the hungry, which he can do in various ways. Amen? Conviction, dreams, ministry of angels, human agencies, etc. But we must believe that. Ecclesiastes 11 says that when it comes time to sowing, to spread out your seed because you don't know which one's going to work today. God is no respecter of persons and neither should we be. We can't treat others as common or unclean. Such as God had to convince Peter to witness to the first Gentiles. And the layman, the layman who was begging at Gate Beautiful in Acts 3, do you remember that? It was his miracle when they witnessed to him. It was his miracle that opened the door for 5,000 others to be saved. Or what about the woman at the well who was an outcast, who became a powerful witness of Jesus in her town? She witnessed to her whole town about the Lord. Don't walk past those doors that God opens, no matter who they are. For every human being is an open door to others. Then we must also pray 
for the humility to not get offended by their response. As we talked about, many types of soil. Not every soil is a good soil. And so we plow the fields in prayer so we can remove the thorns, the rocks, the dryness. Amen. But our responsibility is to sow the seed and let the Holy Ghost to do this work in us. And then we need to pray. Pray to be empowered by his grace, his power. Amen. And for the love of God, his agape love to flow through us. Amen. We need that, church. You need to pray that every day. We need his agape love. Our human love is not enough. It's not enough. We need his agape love flowing through us. How do we do that? For prayer, dying to ourselves. Prayer, pray for that agape love to flow through you in Jesus' name. And as we were praying earlier, pray. Pray for us to be ready, amen, for the Lord to make us ready to be his laborers. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let us pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Would you pray that God would use you? Would you pray that God would count you privileged to be a laborer for him? In the name of Jesus. Matthew 10, 16 says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. When are we going to practice that? Are we going to wait for that time when they deliver us to the council and governors to scourge you? That's what the Bible talks about. When are we going to practice that where we hear the voice of God and we repeat what He tells us to say? Right here at the the church house, that would be a good place to start. Right? It would be a safe place to start. But how many of us are guilty of just going to people and praying for them? through our own words, our own thoughts, laying hands on them because it's the custom, the culture, without, without hearing. And so we don't see results. But when you hear from the Lord, He confirms His Word. Amen? In fact, if you haven't caught it yet, all of this is dependent on us hearing from God. Oh, you might think it's just my personality that I'm shy, I'm introvert, or I don't have time, or whatever your excuse is. Realize that is a spiritual attack. That is a spiritual oppression that you and I have embraced in staying where we're at while there's lost and hungry people. Sometimes you just got to be out there. You can't witness to somebody when you're cooped up in your house. Right? I mean, you caught fish by not being around water. And we can't be fishers of men if we're not around people. How many of you how many of you this week or the last couple of weeks, God has led you to somebody? Can I see your hand? God has led you to somebody, and you've realized God now has set in motion. Not, not because we deserve it or not because we 
are super spiritual, but, but it is the right time. And it's the right place. And God is doing this in Jesus' name. Would you pray right now that God would cause you to hear His voice? That you would be led of the Spirit. Would you pray that in Jesus' name? Father, help us to be sensitive, Lord, to the doors you open. God, when you open the door, we will walk through it. God, we will walk through it. Would you pray right now, Father, lead me to a hungry person. Come on, would you pray? Come on, would you pray? Would you confess it with your mouth? Lord, lead me to a hungry person. Lead me to a hungry person, God. Lord, help me to be sensitive, oh Lord, when you're drawing, drawing them to me. God, and to say only what you want me to say, not to cram down doctrine if it's not the right time. Lord, not to do anything, not to say anything, Lord, but to be sensitive of what you're trying to get me to say and only say those things in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever they, however they respond, that's been between them and God. We're called to be witnesses. We can't save anybody. We're merely, Lord, laborers in your vineyard, God. But I know that you have sent us to places. Lord, it is time that we harvest vineyards we did not plant. Houses that we did not build. Somebody begin to believe that right now. Would you believe for the people you're working with and reaching for in Jesus' name that God will begin to empower you, His grace. Speak to your daughter one more time. Speak to that neighbor one more time as, as God leads you that you may be a laborer in Him. Lord, we pray, God, to you, the Lord of the harvest, that you would send forth laborers into your harvest in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God has one prayer request. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. And you can't pray that prayer without yourself becoming a laborer. At some point, praying that, you begin to realize and say, Lord, I... I yield my life. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. I'm not going to dismiss us, but you and I need to take some time to pray tonight that our life would count for the lost. Would you pray right now? Would you not worry about anything? If you put the kingdom of God first, if you seek it first, all the other things that you've carried, all this time you're stressed and trying to make it and work it, all these other things will be added unto you. Would you find a place to pray in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we will not take any thought of what we shall speak. For it shall be given to us that same hour, O oh God, what we shall say. For it will not be no longer us, Lord, speaking, but your Spirit will be speaking through us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for laborers to be sent. Oh, help us to be available to you, Lord. In the name.